Uh, they should be supported, and um, I will support the committee. And I want the Prime Minister to support the committee because it's very important that we know where the Prime Minister stands on this. Is he going to come into Parliament and vote today and show leadership, or is he going to sit on his hands and hide away? And I think that is now becoming the crucial issue that will define how things go today in Parliament on this. Mm. Uh, what about those that were in this video over the weekend? You've already gone on record and said that you don't think they should receive honours. Uh, is there any precedent to remove them? Is there any procedure that can have the honours that were given to these people removed, as far as you know? I'm not sure there's a procedure that can be used here, but I'm, I don't claim to be the expert. What I do know, I think, is that anybody watching that video, particularly those that lost people or weren't able to say a last goodbye or even a hello to a newborn, um, will be really shocked to think that under this government uh, the, uh, awards are given, honours are given to two of the people in that video. And I think the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak should have simply said no. When he was handed that list by his predecessor, Boris Johnson, he should have said, well, the Privileges Committee is still coming to its findings. I'm not going to pass through any of these honours until I know the outcome of the Privileges Committee. And if the Privileges Committee says, as it did, that you lied to Parliament um, on many occasions and even to be stripped now of any association with Parliament, then I'm not going to put your, your honours through. I think that's what leadership is. That's what I would have done. And I think... I imagine many people watching this would say, well, that was obviously the right course, but, of course, we've got a Prime Minister that just gave in and, and signed the list off. And the idea now that two of the people dancing and partying in that video are going to get honours because the Prime Minister was too weak to do anything about it, I think is you know, yet another thing that's very, very hard for people to stomach. He will, of course, say, the Prime Minister will say that, that it wasn't, it wasn't his, his role to, to, to block or, or nod these through, that he was simply <laughs> doing, doing things by the book, that it was out of well, his he hands. Just, he, Do you think that the, the whole system needs changing now? Well, well, he just says, look, it's a convention. We don't have a con convention in this country, happily, of Prime Ministers lying to Parliament. Um, you know, and this is not party political, because until this point, whether it was Tory or Labour Prime Ministers, everybody understood the rule that if you're Prime Minister, you have to tell the truth when you come to Parliament. So you can't use yesterday's conventions to wave through a list in relation to an unprecedented situation where we've got findings of a, of a Prime Minister that lied to Parliament. In those situations, the convention falls away, frankly, and you just have to do the right thing. But, you know, there's a, there's a, I think there's a growing frustration that here we are, another day in Parliament, another discussion about wrongdoing and chaos by a Conservative government that can no longer govern the country because it's so wound up, tied up um, and inward-looking about the behaviour of its own party, its own party members and supporters and, and, and a previous Prime Minister. Meanwhile, for many people watching this... Um, you know, the most pressing thing is we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis where, you know, every bill seems to be going up. Wages haven't gone up materially in real terms for a very, very long time. And almost all families are feeling the pinch, including now with even higher mortgages because of what the government did to the economy in that mini budget last year. So that's why, you know, in contrast, if you like, to what's happening in Parliament, we're here today setting out our clean power uh, plan for 2030, which is about well, a permanent answer to the question, how do you lower bills, how do you get energy independence, and how do you ensure that the jobs of the future are here in the UK and not elsewhere across the world? Well, let's talk about those bills. We'll talk about energy in a moment, but you mentioned mortgages there. The government is ruling out helping people with yeah. their mortgages. What would the Labour Party do? Would you help people with their mortgage payments? I think we've got to do something immediately, and then we've got to do something long-term. Immediately, um, we would make sure the windfall tax on oil and gas companies that made profits they didn't expect to make would be properly yielded. At the moment, the government's given too many carve-outs. So that wouldn't be a direct mortgage payment, but it would help people with their bills, because mortgage is one of the bills that's obviously been paid, uh, that, that's in the mix with other bills. I mean, we have to be clear about this. The situation in this country is worse because of that terrible mini-budget. So this is a Tory premium on people People's mortgages. That's unforgivable. But, but to be clear, the it's Labour Party be wouldn't be helping term. people pay their mortgages in the same way that the Conservative Party has helped people pay their energy bills. What we've tried to do is to put concrete plans on the table that allow a reduction in all bills with oil and gas 
um, you know, windfall tax, which will affect other bills. But in the mix, of course, it does help families. But look, I accept your challenge, which is that we need a long-term solution to this. We can't have sticking plasters anymore. And that requires a stable plan to grow the economy properly. That hasn't happened for 13 years. And Clean Power 2030 is a crucial part of that. Because if we're able to implement the plan that I'm putting on the table this morning, that will result in lower bills, not just for a few months or a few years, but permanently lower bills for energy. Uh, energy independence, because at the moment Putin is trying to put his boot on our throat, and that's having a painful effect for families uh, you know, across the country, many people watching this. Um, and also, there's a race for the next generation of jobs in renewables. Now, America's in that race, other countries in that race. I want the UK to be in that race because I think we've got the skills, the innovation, we've got the people uh, across the country. We've got the opportunity to win the race for the next generation of jobs. So we should be in that race. And I think that with Clean Power 2030, which is a you know, a tough ask, a tough challenge, we can get ahead of the rest of the world and actually provide some longer-term answers, fix the fundamentals, if you like, for so many people who are struggling now, you know, month after month, year after year, with wages that haven't gone up, bills that have certainly gone up. OK, well, let's and talk most about... people, I think, pretty well saying now, I'm not better off now than I was 13 years ago when the Tories first came into power. Well, let's talk about that energy in more detail. No more new oil or gas licences if Labour wins the election. How does that guarantee our energy security? But oil and gas can't lower prices because oil and gas is sold onto the international market. Uh, we then buy it off the international market. It doesn't lower our prices. So our plan is to lower prices. But it means that we have more greater reliance on other energy. countries in the years in the future when, our, when, ours, when our run, ours run out. Well, at the moment, oil and gas is sold onto the international market and we buy it back. So the argument that... Um, that in itself would reduce bills, obviously isn't true, otherwise we'd have lower bills now. But the other thing about oil and gas is, is it's dwindling. Most of the gas now has been extracted or is accounted for, and there's going to have to be a change. The big strategic question is, do we recognise that and set out now a plan for that transition to renewables and clean power? Across the world, every country knows that's where the future lies, and they're racing towards that goal. I don't want us to sit this out. We did this, if you remember, with coal mining when that was coming to an end. Instead of a strategic plan for the future, we let one source of energy diminish, didn't have a plan, and coal field communities are still feeling the, you know, the pain of that. I'm not going to let that happen under an incoming Labour government. This is okay, an opportunity so less oil and gas, for us to get more, ahead, to get ahead renewables. of the world. More renewables, more wind farms. If you live in a beauty spot, can you expect wind farms on the horizon? Because that's what we need to do to, to kick the fossil fuel habit, isn't it? We do need more onshore wind farms. I'm not going to shy away from that. If we'd not had a ban on onshore wind farms for the last seven, eight years or so, we would have lower bills now. And so people are paying a price for the ban on onshore uh, wind farms, and you know, you've talked about mortgages, understandably, but on energy bills, we are now paying more because of that ban. So we have to overturn that ban. Obviously, I want to work with local communities as to where the wind farms may be. And one of the things I'm setting out today is a local power plan which allows GB Energy... This is going to be a new publicly owned uh, business that we set up, a utility, which will partner with local communities to make sure that any investment from the UK through GB Energy ensures that any reward comes back to the UK and working with local communities to make sure that if there is any source of... Uh, power uh, under a local plan near them that they benefit um, from it. So, you know, this is, this is working with but communities. Do you think that's going to be enough to convince communities, communities to, to have these wind farms? Yeah, I, I think once we can lay out the plan here, show how it works, what the yield is, and show there's a benefit back to the community that, uh, and working with local authorities, then I think we can move forward. What we can't do is simply sit this one out because. You know, in, in years to come, you will be quizzing me or somebody else to say, why on earth did we miss this opportunity to recognise we needed change, get ahead of the game and ensure that we in the UK had our own energy supply for generations to come? That's the prize here. We have to walk towards that challenge, reap the reward and make sure that the investment we put in the UK comes back to the UK, not elsewhere around the world. Uh, they should be supported... And um, I will support the committee. And I want the Prime Minister to support the committee because it's very important that we know where the Prime Minister stands on this. 
Is he going to come into Parliament and vote today and show leadership, or is he going to sit on his hands and hide away? And I think that is now becoming the crucial issue that will define how things go today in Parliament on this. Mm. Uh, what about those that were in this video over the weekend? You've already gone on record and said that you don't think they should receive honours. Uh, is there any precedent to remove them? Is there any procedure?